we're going to go through um, the idea of electromagnetic fields, not just magnetic fields, but electromagnetic fields, and something called the right-hand rule number one. First, this is showing you an electromagnetic field. Electromagnetic fields are created by current carrying wires that allow that magnetic field to loop around them. And so, there we go. Let's go with dark blue. And so, let's see. So, a loop of wire. has a magnetic field around it. Over here on the left, you'll see a single loop of wire and you will see this magnetic field shape where I think of it kind of like a burger where you've got like one bun and one bun, and then like here's like the patty in between, right? Now, if we were to take all of these loops of, or take a single loop of wire and then keep adding multiple loops, then you would get something that looks like what's on the right. Each loop would then kind of add together and eventually form what definitely looks like that burger shape that I think of. So here is the top bun, here is the bottom bun, and then here is the patty in between. When you have multiple loops that are used as an electromagnet, those loops of wire are together called a solenoid. And so this is just loops of wire used as an electromagnet. Since magnetic fields have a direction, then these solenoids will create a magnetic field, electromagnetic field that has a specific direction. And so in the picture over here on the right, we can see these arrows are coming out of this side, which means they go out of the north. These arrows are going in, and so they come in to the south. So it's not actually like a bar magnet where it's a physical piece. It's actually the current that's flowing through this coil of wire here, and those individual circles add up to make the full burger shape with the north and the south ends. Now, let's look at a single loop more specifically. This single loop, you can see the shape where we've got the lines going in the middle, and then on either side, we see the magnetic field circling around, making circles. And so that is extremely important to know is that the magnetic field circles the current carrying wire. The direction it circles is determined by the direction of the current. So here are a few more examples of this single wire. So now instead of a loop of wire, it's just a straight wire. And so here is a straight wire, and you can see these beautiful circles going around it. Same here, we have the wire and then the circles going around it. And then if you notice in this picture and this picture, they actually have a specific direction. So in the one here on the left with the check, these are all little compass needles and they are all pointing, circling in the same direction. They're all going counterclockwise here. The ones over on this side, 
our actual circles that are drawn, which again, have this direction to them of counterclockwise. And so what we know is that the magnetic field is a vector, which means it has direction. And the direction depends on the direction of current. We can determine that using something called the right hand rule. Right hand rule number one is what determines the direction of spin for the magnetic field. And this spin is around a current carrying wire. The way we determine that <clears throat> is that your thumb is in the direction of current and your fingers, these curl in direction of the magnetic field. Let's see how this actually works using your right hand. All right, let's do some examples um, of using this right hand rule number one. So first, here is right hand rule number one. Now, of course, you, um, I might, it might look like it's actually my left hand, but remember, it's always mirrored, right? So right hand rule number one says that your thumb is going to be the um, current flowing through a wire and your thumb is always current for all of these right hand rules and your fingers are always going to be the magnetic field and so in this case we're talking about a wire and so here we go here's a wire and so our thumb is going to go in the direction of the flow of current. So here it would either be going upward like this, or it would be going downward through the wire like this. And then our fingers would wrap around the wire, like you can see here, making a circle around it. Just like we saw in the pictures with those iron filings, the magnetic field wraps around and makes circles around this wire. And so your fingers create that circle pattern. All right, how would we draw this? Here we go. All right, if, let's see, here's a wire and let's have the current going this direction, right? And so if current is going this way, that's our thumb. And then if we can imagine that there is this wire, right? Then our fingers are gonna make a circle around this wire. See, our thumb is in the direction of the magnetic field, or sorry, but our thumb is in the direction of the current and our fingers make the direction of those circles. And so it's going to circle around like this imagining three dimensions. And so it will, let's see, here we go. So it goes like this. So it'll come out from behind, go in front and then go back behind. And so behind and round. Now, this is really difficult to draw, right? Three dimensions um, on a two dimensional surface. So what we can say is see, my hand is kind of coming outward 
on this side, right? So it's coming outward on this side, and then it's going to be going back inward on this side. So we can use our circle pictures, and then we can say that this side is going out, and then this side is going in. All right, let's try another. All right, what if instead we have a wire and it's going like this and current is flowing this direction, okay? And so here's my wire again. And now my thumb is gonna be going upward. And so current goes up and the magnetic field is going to curve around like this. And so it's gonna be going out on this side and then back in on this side making our circle so out and in out and in all right so let's draw that so out it's going to come out and circle back in making our circles around that wire and so over here, we'll put out, and over here, we'll put in to make those circles. Now, again, this is not the easiest thing to draw, right? So what if we change this, where instead of drawing these little loopy arrows, right? Well, you know what, let me just do it this way. What if we were to just do it this way? Just say like this side is out and this side is in. Well, let's see if we're using our thumb up rule, right? Out and in. And so then this is a way that we could represent this three dimensional motion on a two dimensional surface. So we know it's coming out and back in, out. And circling like that. Over here, on this one, we would do the exact same thing. So here's our wire. There's our current. And we have it going out and in, like so. Now, scientists don't like to just use words, right? There always have to be symbols of some kind. And so, yes, there are symbols for out and in. Um, here's how I do it. There are a lot of different ways and different teachers use different methods. Um, so make sure that, you know, if you don't like the ones that I do, then to talk to one of the other physics teachers because they have other ways of remembering this. So out... To me, I'll just draw it over here on the side, okay? So let's go this way just a little bit. There we go. I think of out like bubble letters. You know, like how you used to do these potentially like way back in the day. And so out is a circle with a dot. And so it looks just like a bubble O. So out is a circle with a dot. In is a circle with an X. Now, two ways that I think of this one. One a to-go lid. So you know when you get a to-go cup, there's a lid that goes with it, right? And what's in the middle there? Is an X. So it's a circle with an X in the middle, just like this. And so what do we do with the straw? We put the straw in the X. So see that? So we take our circle. Let's see if I can line up. There we go. Circle with an X. And we take our straw and we go in to the X. 
The other way to think about it is instead, um, imagine like a pirate, right? So you've got a buried treasure and you follow the map and the map leads you to the X and X marks the spot. And that is where the treasure would be. Well, what would you do to, in order to get the treasure? You would take a shovel and you would dig in to the X, You'd dig in to the X. And so circle X is in. Now, how does this relate to our two examples that we've got right here? Well, instead of the word out, we would put a dot in that circle. And instead of the word in, we would put an X over here, X, and then over here, dot, like so. And that's it. That's it for right hand rule number one. A um, couple of other examples, right? Because it's always good to do a few. <clears throat> Okay, what if we did current going this way? Take our right hand, thumb goes down, and so our hand curls in the direction of the magnetic field. So thumb goes down, these fingers go in to the board, so this side will be in. which means that this side, yeah, no, I'm twisting here, right? This side, my fingers come out. So over here is out. Looks like a silly face, doesn't it? All right, um, how about, why don't we go this direction? Right hand, current is going this way, and our fingers go in on the top and come back out on the bottom. So this one, in, this one, out, like so. All right, here's another one. What if the current is like this? All of this is in three dimensions, which means that the wire could potentially be doing like this, right? It could be actually going out of the board. And if the wire is sticking out of the board, then what way is the magnetic field going to go? Well, your thumb, if current is going out, your thumb will be going out of the board. Your fingers will be curled in the direction of the magnetic field. And so in this case, it would be going counterclockwise. Like so. So then, what if instead, again, the wire is sticking out of the board like so, but now the current is going this way into the board. So thumbs up, in. There's our fingers. They are curling in this direction. And so the magnetic field would circle going clockwise. Hopefully that helps with right hand rule number one.